Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Just came back from a fun night out in Houston. Thursday nights are really good, and uh, that's why I'm a little better dressed up than I normally am for these videos. Thought I'd cut a video while I still was awake and tell you about, I've got so many projects going on right now, parallel video projects right now, that I thought I needed to leapfrog and get some of these out. Let me tell you about some of them real quick before I even get to the topic at hand. Oh, and uh, these are Facebook you're on camera right now. You can record through this. I haven't showed you that in the past. What's cool about this is I might use it at Expona. I, I thought about using it at Florida Audio Show, but the aspect ratio and the quality isn't that great. So maybe using this in the future. But what I did uh, video tonight, and I might put it in the membership section, was a really bad piano player. Um, I was at Mastro's restaurant you know, pretty good steakhouse. And uh, they have a piano player that plays in the background. Well, number one negative was that he didn't know Back to Black by Amy Winehouse, which if you've watched some of my previous videos, one of my favorite tracks. Number two, he did a cover of Mr. Brightside by The Killers, and it was awful. So I photo, I mean, I videoed it on this, these uh, goggles, and it's probably broken now. It was so bad. But anyway, that might come out at some point. I'll, I'll upload that. The reason I'm trying to get fit in time as much video stuff as I can, because I've got three or four projects going on at the same time. Number one, we had the LP ripping, and I'm going to table that for now. I think I've given enough content for you to digest and provocative and hopefully ear opening on that. But I also promised some of those tracks from Florida Audio Show, featuring them on the Rockport Cygnus and the Macintosh 3500 that I featured just came out at 3MA. Some people were worried about, oh, it's not broken in yet and all this kind of stuff. Well, this is now well over a month in. You're going to hear the Macintosh 3500 with a Macintosh preamp and the Rockport Cygnus speakers, a combination you don't rarely, you rarely see or hear. And uh, they did phenomenal with some of these same tracks we heard at the show. And I'm going to play those tracks for you in a separate video. And then on top of that, I've got another video uh, already in parallel process of showcasing these same tracks from Florida on the MBL 101 E's because they weren't played on the extremes, but it's got a du dual purpose as well. This room at 3MA has a six pack of REL carbon special uh, subwoofers and mating subs, especially an array to MBLs is very difficult because you can't put them really close to it and impact that omnidirectional presentation. And on top of that, once you get six of these high-end rail subs in a room like they have with no bass traps yet, they're on back order, you try to get it um, tamed, but it's just overwhelming. So even with the volume on the first notch of these six subs, they weren't able to get it dialed in correctly. So they were so impressed with the DS speaker um, electronic crossover and DSP module that we used at my friend Doug house to integrate the rail 25. They've become a dealer now and they got two for this room. And you're going to be able to see how they integrate a six pack of rail carbon special speak, uh, subwoofers with the MBL 101 E's. I'll show you the before and after measurements and sound wise, while bass doesn't come out good through these camera phone videos, Trust me, this has made a market difference. So it's going to show where $2,000 can improve a $150,000 system, you know, and dramatically, not just one of these little bitty tweaks. So uh, that's going to be a great video coming soon. But I leapfrogged all of these to do this video, which is going to feature one of my favorite rooms I've ever visited. One of the best sounds I've ever heard in somebody's home. And that shows as well. And you shouldn't really sneeze at that uh, comment because as you've seen a lot of my videos in the past, I get to see a lot of great rooms, not just at these shows. In fact, those are all almost assuredly a level below a lot of these other dedicated rooms I get to go into and have featured in the past. So very rarely are those rooms that I feature sound bad. None of them really have even come close to sounding bad. But it's also equally rare for one to separate itself among all these other ones that are six-figure rooms and gears. 
Uh, but this one really has. And I featured it in the past, so I'll link the video so you can refresh yourself with the room and some of the treatments that they did, especially these curtains made all the difference in the world. Because really, you take those curtains out of this room, it goes from one of the best rooms I've heard to could be one of the worst, and especially if you take the rug out too. It's a very difficult room, but shows just how important room treatments are. So with this series of videos I'm gonna be doing, I've already done the LP stuff, but I'm also gonna be drilling down more on two other mantras that are the mission of my channel. You're going to see where room treatments make a huge difference in a system and DSP when you don't have the room treatments still make a big difference. And then if you got all three, like I've got in my room, you know, you've got a tremendous upside of performance for not a lot of invested money in the electronics. So you can kind of see where all three should be considered if you really want to get pinnacle performance. So the other thing I wanted to show, though, is that this room is adding analog playback. So it piggybacks on some of the other stuff I've been showing with Wally Tools. You're going to see 3MA Audio, Carl from 3MA, their turntable expert, set up this turntable and get the behind the scenes of how that works and using the Wally Tools. And what's even super cool about this video series, and this is only going to be part one, is that we uncovered where we couldn't get it dialed in because I think what we've uncovered is a flaw or de defect in the tone arm of the table. And the ironic thing is while we were out there and I was filming this, I was also corresponding with JR from Wally Tools on a totally separate issue. But once I told him what we were doing, he said, oh, immediately look out for X, Y, Z. Sure enough, he's a savant. That's what we encountered as well. And he didn't even know at the time that we had actually found the same problem. So what you're going to kind of get is a rare look of where we are in the process as of now. And then I'll have a subsequent video where we do the troubleshooting to get it even more dialed in and fixed. But what's really cool is that even with it not perfect, the anti-skate and the left-right balance being a little bit off, we were playing this system and it still sounded phenomenal with the analog. And uh, people were coming over. You'll see a lot of people in the video. Uh, and we told them, come on over, you got to hear this. It just sounded great. And everybody was going, wow, this is amazing. Um, so it impressed a lot of people that also get to hear a lot of great gear. So I thought I would share this with you and show you that behind the scenes and give you that insight. And also it'll piggyback into how we fix it in the future because in case you ever encounter some of these issues, this may be helpful. So without further ado, let me bring you to this guy's house and enjoy. Okay, longtime subscribers will recognize this house, the YGs beautiful if you want to check out the legacy video I did on this room it's awesome and these curtains to refresh your memory these are not just regular curtains these are like mega dollar acoustic curtains because this is all glass behind here it was gonna cause a lot of problems but now just really amazing transformation in what otherwise would have been a difficult room with just hard wood floors and glass it wouldn't have been worth it to put this kind of system, but now it's awesome. And Carl's with 3MA is going to be setting up his turntable. What cartridge do you have on there? It's the um, Clear Audio Concerto V2. Yeah. Okay, and you'll notice he's using the Wally Tool stuff from my videos at the Florida Audio Show. Yeah, it works. Definitely. We just need Jose to come over here with the microscope he bought. Yeah, he's gonna let me borrow it so I can uh, figure out how to get some experience for it. So yeah, this is the kind of customer service you get at 3MA. They'll set up your turntable at your house. Some of the Avid gear. It's a little different chassis design than you can the Florida with the, they have the X on the top. An Everest Shinyana power conditioner. These are Odin Nordos cable, Shinyata cables back there. Vetus R-Ender. Again, the main thing that's changed has been the turntable um, since my prior video. So I'll have music clips in that prior video if you want to check it out. Today it's mainly just showing the setup and what's changed and kind of giving a refresher or at least for new viewers a chance to see this system it's an awesome system once uh, 
we get it fired up. Just a little up, bit so. more footage of what it takes to set this stuff up. With pretty detailed instructions if you do the skater, the tractor. This is double sided. So, yeah. If you like getting into the weeds, you can do it yourself or hire somebody like Carl. From, uh, this is from Analog Magic. You can see the scene. All right, so what do you use this for? All I'll do is tighten the um, cartridge screws down to the same torque. Equal torque. Interesting. So a lot of people don't even realize they just probably just tighten it. Yeah, you can change the azimuth just by the torque uh, tension of, on the screws on the cartridge. So. Yeah, so even the tension on the screws and a special wrench for that. Amazing. Thanks for... Uh, Making me not want a turntable even more. <laughs> well, you don't have to screw these things all the time. You just do it once. Hopefully, yeah. All right. It's a beautiful oh, turntable. Set up coral, there's no. No. Oh, what's your? Just... Yeah, if you redo it, you know. But uh, okay. Let me think. All right. Done that. Okay. So what are you doing with this? It's a test. This is record. going to be um, at, um, azimuth, which is the, um, so you want to track the stylus cart, I can't leave right down the center of the groove so you don't have any, um, you know, say right down the center, so you don't have either or. Straight, okay. I mean, as the lathe that cut the original master, you okay. want to be right down the center. And that's just this. So. Gotcha. I will give it to the turntable guys. They come up with these fancy turns, azimuth and zenith, for <laughs> just get the damn thing in the hole. Yeah. <laughs> just exactly. why don't you just call? Let's get the damn thing in the hole. <laughs> So okay. yeah, you're doing the. Yeah, this album just plays a tone, and uh, you get it. One first track is uh, the left channel, second track is the right channel, and the third track is uh, center. So right. In the first two tracks, yeah. It just, and it kind of tells you from here. Yeah, you see, I'll just jump it in the first track, and you'll see. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Not too bad. Huh? It's, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's 28, 27. That's the range you want to be in. And now it'll okay. slowly go. It'll, it'll skip over to... I'll just, I'll just let it run. Watch it. Adjusting it on this is pretty easy? No, this can take hours. Mm. It is not even close. Mm. So, again... It can, it can get more exact than this, but this is, it's 0.5 off, you know, it's, this is pretty damn close. And... Within the tolerances. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, well, let me, uh, going to change. Let me turn this bit. So, we're going to uh, start, this is a, do the wide angle here. Yeah, okay, you want to. That's pretty cool. That's the left. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to change tracks. Come on. So, okay, now. Oh. Right on, huh? Half off. Yeah, that's pretty good, though. It's pretty damn close. Yeah, I would say. I mean, this is your sound stage. Right. That, um, it, this left and right big, channel, yeah, right? Because if it's not difference. in the, if it's on the groove one or the other side, obviously, problem. 
So azimuth is looking good. Okay, we're on. I'm going to stick with that. And that's tight. So nice. All right, one down. Uh, my guess is going to be a little heavy. Should be. Is it two? I have to look again. All right. Yeah, see, it's two point nine. So it's mm -hmm. like, this is not. It's, this is a nice adjustment. These are. It's really easy to. Um, so basically, we're going to move the uh, counterweight backwards. So let me just see which way. Wrong way. Okay, there we go. So let's go to the right. Remeasure. I probably didn't make near enough. Let's see, I don't feel it. Yeah. Now I'm going to go up more. Now, what was you saying about the... Um the magnet of the cartridge actually impacting the scale. Well, that was um, the Lyra cartridge uh -huh. that he the was talking so about strong. and Edna that he had. And he said the, the magnets are really strong and the this is metal. So it throws that off. Yeah, that's probably... And I've never heard of that before. I guess it's... When you're talking about these small amounts, I guess that oh, is... Oh, gosh, everything matters. Yeah. So really, the scale piece should probably be plastic. Yeah, he, the, he gave me, it's a Riga that he uses. Okay. So I want, because I want to buy one. Or you could put a felt thing on it and just calibrate it for that. Yeah, you know? but then it, you know. You, yeah, well, yeah, it's probably. You, it level too. Yeah, is, that's true. Is an, is an issue. So, I mean, as far as height, because basically this seems a little low to me, you know, because you're trying to do the tracking force at final height and final in that then. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, true. So it's probably not perfect, but again, getting close. Two point two six. I just click play on my digital. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it tracks just fine. Two point. As long as my Wi-Fi and my Ethernet is good, you know. No, this, it was fun when I had a turntable. This is kind of somewhat fun. As long as you see that you're making progress and you can hear the difference, then it's kind of a fun thing. To... 2.02. Okay. We're going to have to go with that. Within tolerance. Yeah, because it's, it's it says 2.0. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. So, yeah, we're... Nice. I mean that, oh, it's just a bunch of plastic. Why? You don't need steel. I mean, if it does the job, that's it all that It does the job. I mean, I I mean, we got this $1,500 clear audio kit. There's mm -hmm. no anti-skate in device in here at all. Really? No. Huh. That's why, you know, Johnny bought this without asking it. And that was, you know, the Wally it tools is much up. better, yeah. So this is going to do the anti-skate. It's called the Wally Skeeter, if you can kind of read here. Pretty simple tool, acrylic or plastic yeah, combination. Well. And just the weight, and it just does the job determining the force of which the cartridge is, I guess, pulling, for lack of a better way, you know? See, I even know some of this stuff back from the day. Actually, the, 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 the um, seminars he gave were really riveting, even though I'm not a turntable guy, it's very interesting. Yeah, thanks for going there. I got to, you know, watch those because they were in there. So. Yeah, they were some of my least watched videos in terms of um, oh, in terms sorry. of stats. But I think for people that are in it, that was probably their favorite video, you know, because that was really good information. Line this up. Oh, 12 inch. Here, that's ten and a half. This is twelve. So most turn uh, tone arms are either nine or twelve, right? Yeah, there's some ten and a halves. Right. But, um, so that tool will handle pretty much any of them, but yeah. I always prefer twelve inches to. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. Gotta go with what. God gave you? It's, you know, it's in your DNA. Your turntable has to match your DNA. 
Okay. You see, this should flow just back and forth. There's a little resistance there. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know about that. So now I'm going to add it in and start uh, from the, all the way in. Let's see what it gives me. Let's see what that does. So for somebody new, what are you looking for it to do? Well, you you get first you start from the near the outside of the groove and you want um to go about 11 degrees at the moment i'm right at about seven okay seven. yeah so you have basically yeah everything on there i want that a little bit closer in that's right there just to hold that in place down. Alright. Hmm. Not getting much. Didn't change much. Usually, you know, you, you dial it and it would just move. But there, there's some resistance in here somewhere. I don't think it's the people. It shouldn't be. I don't know. It's not hitting the. Feel it. Obviously, there's something though. And I'm on the 12, but on the groove. Yeah, because there's a, an outer groove part and there's an inner groove part. So you'd have when to you move it inside, in. it so. should be around 11 degrees on the outside, and about okay. eight on the. You know, when you get to 68 millimeters from the spindle, right? It should be about. Um, Eight. Oops. It's gonna wrap somehow. See, it's moving. Mm -hmm. Now I'm about eight. You said you wanted about seven? Well, I want about 11 degrees. So there's some big hash marks, and I'm right. That's nine. Yeah, it moved when you did it. That's, that's 10. And this resistance here, I mean, once it should just sway. I mean, like a swing. Yeah. I mean, it's free because it's, if there's, shouldn't be anything hindering it. Yeah. So, so. that's, um, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to move to the intergroove just to uh, 
Let's see, and slide this guy all the way over right here. Right? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> see, uh, something's not right. Obviously, there's way too much anti skate on the outside of the uh, platter. Interesting. Mm. So, if I get the uh, inside right. Yeah, so now it's moving. It's easy. That's for the in, inner groove. That's 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 where you want to be. But for the Ooh. outer groove, it'd be off now. This is kind of a, a minor force, but I'm gonna keep it right there. This is the locking screw. So I'm just gonna squeeze that in, and I'm gonna do it over again. Okay. But no, I'm I'm totally amateur in this. But wouldn't that mean that maybe the turntable's not level? I I mean this is a two hundred fifty dollar level. Yeah, it's and I, it's dead on. It's really hard to put the level on. on oh, the, I see what. Yeah. Yeah. The, where do you put it? You know, yeah. So I yeah. basically had to level. I leveled the shelf, and then I I did it on the platter. Okay. There's, you know. But probably there is a little bit of misleveling somewhere. I might put it on here just to see. My guess, but I'm yeah, as amateur as it gets to this stuff. This is a really nice level. See? Hmm. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I'm it so Look at that. I mean, in that configuration, it's. You know, it's level in different ways you because I mean these screws aren't they're flush they're flush so it should yeah. be the they're flush and this is basically the same part as that so I mean and of course this thing is extremely sensitive so I mean that that that's got to be level I mean, yeah yeah At I least mean, and that's the the um, 90 degrees from the um, the, tone the arm. direction of the, uh, the tone arm base. All so right. interesting. Okay. And you put it on the platter, and it's flat too. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Okay. This is uh, we're ready to listen. Nice. Well, I could do the speed. But, um, all right, it's time to actually play some music. We're going to play this yeah, one that you've seen. This, you know, like I said, this guy takes about 50. I mean, you'll, it's, it's like you would think it would just play, but no. It's, it's this has been featured in previous pocket. videos. Oh, that's my jacket for the night. It's very cold here. So, 